Hey. Approaching on Diego Cortez. Okay. We're bringing out the client right now, and we do have a Spanish interpreter here. We also have the father here and the uncle here as well, Your Honor. Okay. No, it's they just yeah they just filed it. Um, come on up. Do you mind bringing the parents up? Yeah, please. Um, Theo and Papa de Diego Cortez. Your Honor, we wanted to bring him out. Can we go ahead and knock out a, a THA real quick? Yes. Mr. Eaton, can you come up for me, please? Page seven. Good morning, Mr. Emmetum. Do you have a lawyer today? Uh, no, representing myself. You are charged with unlawful carrying of a weapon. It looks like you also, out of the same charge, picked up a fraud as well. Um, I mean, okay, you can represent yourself. It's your absolute right. I mean, that's, I don't know how smart it is. Have you ever represented yourself before? Yeah, many times. And how did that go? I have many dismissals. For what kind of cases? I had a dismissal on unlawful carry before. And you represented yourself? Yes. In, in this, in in this, this court? Just found no PC. Oh, well, I found no probable cause. That's why I got dismissed. You didn't represent yourself. I, I was representing myself, but the judge did find no probable cause. I found. Wait, was it me? No, no, it wasn't you. It was. Well, I don't know. I think it June, was you. June 9, 2022. I found no probable cause. I think that was you. You didn't represent yourself for nothing, man. I did it. No. Okay. So, uh, well, you can hope and wish and dream, whatever. Um, if you want to represent yourself, you're more than you're entitled to do that, right? But yeah, you know, while I like to tell people, it's like brain surgery when you need brain surgery, when you need heart surgery, you know, are you going to do that on yourself? Because you're not trained, you know, you don't know how to perform open heart surgery. Same thing with the law. You know, you're not trained in it. I, I mean, I'm assuming that you're not, you didn't go to law school, did you? What, how far did you get in school? I graduated school. I went to some college. How far did you get? Two years ago, I got a I mean, not through college, but I went to school. Okay. So I'm, we're in the middle of trial now. Um, and so I don't have the time to go through all of what they're called Feretta warnings to see whether you should um, represent yourself. I'm happy to do that. Um, why don't we delay it off one, like a week? Are you, are you working at this time? Uh, yeah, and I, I stay in Austin. I don't live in Houston, so. Uh, what do you do for a living? I have my own business. Doing what? Resale, Resale clothing, how much, audio production. How much money do you make a month? Uh, I can't tell you, but it's the pace of bills. You're very cryptic in all of your answers, you know? And not only that, but you going to Austin, if you represent yourself, you're going to have to meet with the DAs on a constant basis to get evidence. So that's going to require you to come here to Houston yeah, to file, quite a bit. To I was ready to find my motion today if I needed to be. If you know. Okay. Before I do that, though, I need to have a Feretta hearing. Um, if you're willing to wait, we can do that a little bit later when I take a break in trial. Um, I had this one, I had my other case um, upstairs the same day. The judge from when I came to have my you last been up there yet? No, I haven't been up okay, there yet. Okay, so go up there. When you're done, come back down here. Oh. Don't forget to come back. If you don't come back, I'm going to issue a warrant. Go take care of yourself upstairs and come back. Um, I need Lori to put this on there.
Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So today is September 11th, 2024. It's approximately 1225 p.m. Um, we are now in court five. In front of me, I have Eaton Emetum, case number 2522688. Would you please identify yourself for purpose of the record? Is a man eats on Emetum. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? That you're going to tell the truth. That's it. Yes? Okay. Um, state, would you identify? Okay. So um, the reason that we're putting this on the record now is um, Mr. Emetum has been charged with the offense of unlawful carrying of a weapon. Um, the case is 40 days old. It appears that probable cause has already been found. I don't know if I did probable cause on this or if I don't know if another judge did because um, I don't I don't remember Mr. Imitam and I was out a week. Was another judge, yeah, lolly gagging. So let's just do it for. <clears throat> so on August second, twenty twenty four, officers observed a car without a front license plate, change lanes without a signal and have expired registration as of March, 2023. Upon approaching, officers smelled marijuana. PC search returned 4.17 grams and a Lotus Smith & Wesson handgun. Additionally, there was a backpack with three checks that did not belong to him. Officer called Kumamoto, who said the checks were stolen from her restaurant on July 8th. When defendant broke the front window, went to the back where the checks were kept in the office, broke the hinge of the back door and exited. So um, as a result, because of that, he was charged with felony fraud on that one, That's on correct. the check. Okay. Yes, he has an open case in the 182nd. Looks like he made a $15,000 bond. With us, I am gonna find there's probable cause to go forward. Um, Ms. Well, hold on a second. We'll, we'll get there. I, I, I'll let you say your piece, but do you have a Texas driver license? I have a U.S. dot private property number with uh, the FMCSA. Uh, what my vehicle was on there, it was sticker tags, everything with my business, the Amazon Estates. That's with the Department of Transportation. Is that from the state of Texas or from where? This is federal. This is with the Department of Transportation. Okay, no, but you still need a Texas driver license and you um, need registration and I did on all a vehicle. my best with them because it was private property that I had. They said I didn't uh, if I didn't need to get registration with the state of Texas because I registered it. They said that would be my uh, volunteer, but since it's private property, I'm gonna have to register it. Okay. Um, from what I know of the law, you need a Texas driver license to be able to drive. Um I was I mean it was, this is what jurisdiction is this case being tried on? That's what I'm trying to, because I'm kind of don't know what it's being tried on. It's criminal, civil, or criminal. Yeah, so right. It, You're facing jail time, right? Uh, I believe so. But Weren't you taken to jail? Yeah. So that wouldn't lead you to believe it's criminal, right? Yeah, but under common law, or is it military and tribune? Because also, with oh, the I've been waiting for something like this for so long. <laughs> this is so much fun. I'm just trying to see this from what I'm being tried on because what I was told with with the US side, I wouldn't have to register with the state of Texas with the registration or licensing. I do have my own place with that vehicle too as well. So um do you need a license to drive a Texas driver license? That's that's it. You either have one or you don't. The federal government has regulated to the states through the constitution that they have allowed the states on their own initiative to create laws regarding driving on highways and byways. So that's why you see every single state has different requirements for licensing, insurance, um, mode of transportation. It, it, the federal government has somewhat to do with it, but by and large, they have delegated to the states that they are their own entity with regard to creating laws in their specific highways. So that's why every single state has a different type of license 
different type of insurance, like the Texas driver license is what white versus Arkansas might be yellow or red or Hawaii might be. So that's every single state has their own laws with regard. In Texas, you have to have a Texas driver license. You also have to have liability insurance as a minimum in the event that you get into an accident. Those are the two main requirements that you need to drive. If you're gonna drive a vehicle, it also has to be registered so that they know that you're driving the vehicle and that you own it or have the right to have that so it's not a stolen vehicle. Um, I, I own the vehicle and everything. When I was here the last hearing with the judge, like what he was saying, he said that when it had applied to me, but he was gonna see what they were gonna say about the other court about the probable cause of stopping me because he said registration went ahead in the front license plate when it had applied to me. It does apply. It applies to everybody. Everybody has to have a back license plate. They also have to have a front license plate. And so much they also tell you where it has to be on the car. They regulate. You can't put it in the windshield. State, right? State. Yeah. Right. They tell you where it has to be. You can't put it on the windshield. You can't put it on, um, like on what's it called? The, uh, on the light. It's got to be right there. They even tell you how many centimeters it's supposed to be from the street to the actual place on the car. That's how bad the state of Texas micromanages all these things. They even tell you how many damn centimeters it's got to be on the car. So you have to have a front license plate. You got to have a license, got to have insurance. Um, so if you don't have that, you can't drive. And that's it. Yeah, I stayed to tell them I was traveling. I wasn't arguing with them, but I was traveling. I wasn't making commerce. I used to do medical transportation, so I'm kind of aware with licensing and registration and everything. That's why with my private vehicles, I did that with the U.S. DOT instead of the state. And I didn't know that was correct. Interfered. You, have, they you said, need a license. It doesn't matter whether you're saying you're conveying, whether you're traveling, whether you're, um, you know, driving. A, it's a privilege, it's not a right, right? There's a big difference between a privilege versus a right. You have the right to walk. I have the right to travel, don't I? Yeah, I'm taking your happy-go-lucky feet. You wanna travel, That's take me. those two feet to travel, I'll, not in a car. Just what the 14th Amendment was saying, like I have the right to travel. You do, feet. yes, and you can it's walk your happy ass from one part to the other part. Not in a car though, not without a license and insurance. What's on there, from what I, I did this with the Department of Transportation, they said automobiles were on there, Carrier on bicycles. They're wrong. I'm just telling you now, they're wrong. Whoever told you that, whatever, whoever, where you got that, Agency. it's complete. Because imagine this, Mr. Emmett Tom, and I've seen this before. Imagine that you get into an accident, right? And you kill a five year old kid. What's going to happen at that point? Whoever yeah. owns that car, the other people, they're going to come after you. They're not going to go after all, they're going to come after you. Yeah. The first thing they're going to do is, do you have insurance? And if you don't have insurance, they're going to sue you. And then they're going to attach a lien on absolutely everything that you own to satisfy the judgment they get against you. And they will take your house. They will take your car. They will take your bank account. They will attach to where if you ever want to start working and get a paycheck, they're going to garnish all that money. You have insurance liability insurance so that if you ever get into an accident you don't mean to do it you don't you didn't mean to kill the kid it's not an, an purposement it was it's an accident and accidents happen you might be looking at your phone you're looking at you know this pretty girl that's walking across the street and then boom you know you have insurance so that if that happens the insurance company will pay on your behalf so you don't have to pay out of your own pocket and they will even give you a lawyer to represent you on your behalf because that's what you pay for when you get insurance. If you get into an accident, lawyers usually call you and say, hey, man, tell me what happened. Was it your fault? Or was it the other people's fault? Because we want to know who to pay. And that's why for $30 to $40 a month, you get insurance for that very purpose. And I've seen people come here. They have killed someone and they get a $250,000 judgment against them. I've seen it. And God, you, it, you'll never dig yourself out of that. So the conveying, the this, that, you need a license. You've got to have insurance. And we do it with every single person that comes here. Can I say for the unlawful carry, the, the possession of marijuana, 
the person that was in the vehicle told the uh, officer it wasn't it was legal hemp that they got from the store they have receipts and everything in texas you can have legal hemp they got it from the store even told the officer it was theirs he pulled me out the car he didn't ask for any paperwork now i mean now you're 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 making the apple apples and oranges right now we got to test it is it weed oh yeah we, we, is it him understand that takes time but you also need a lawyer to represent you uh, I find my own discovery. I was representing myself, pro se. And you can do that if you want. Yeah. But we have to go through a series of questions. I represented myself plenty of times. I had dismissals here from the and, and, and for purposes of the record, um, so Mr. Emmett Tom had a case with me here. Um, it was May. It was actually June 7th of 2022. He was charged with another gun case. And that was with Victor, Victoriano. God, that was a great DA too. Um, and I found no probable cause in that case, right? So you didn't represent yourself in that case. I found no probable cause and they dismissed it. They didn't have to dismiss it, but they did dismiss it. So other than that case, have you ever represented yourself? Yeah, many times. So I've dismissed it all through here from Harris County. Traffic okay. violations. Uh... You're welcome to do it, you know, and, you know, Who's one of the worst? What, who's one of the best presidents that that in history that you can think about right now? Wonderful to me right now. Do you can't think of one good president that we've ever had? I don't know any. Abraham Lincoln, he won the good. I never met him. I don't know about him at that time. Abraham Lincoln said something. He goes, "You know what? He who represents himself has a fool for a client." That's what he said. Meaning that when you represent yourself, there is an inherent conflict and there's an inherent bias and you may not be able to see things objectively. Meaning that you have your heart, you've got your soul into this case. So you may not be able to see from an outside position if they're same, same, saying something that makes sense. You're absolutely entitled to represent yourself. And if you wanna do that, you're more than welcome to it. And I have no problem with you doing it. You need to understand though, if you represent yourself, you can't come at a later day and say, you know what? I, I, I had ineffective assistance of counsel. My lawyer sucked. Well, you represented yourself. You now can't complain about that. You know, if you, if you go to trial and you lose and I end up putting your butt in jail for a year, you can't complain. You're stuck like Chuck for a whole year because that's what you're facing. You're facing a year in jail and you got a bunch of other documents too that, you know, so... Um, let my discovery from that last month that I filed. Well, let's 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 do the let's do the question. So, your full what is your full name? Eton Cheese Rope Amazon. Okay, how old are you? I'm 34. Where were you born? In America. Were you born here in Houston? Were you born in? Okay, you read in, you read and write English, right? Yes. Okay. Um, do you have any learning disabilities or communication handicaps? Have you ever been declared mentally incompetent or treated for any mental health disorder? Okay. Um, you said last time I asked you about your educational background. You graduated from high school. I graduated high school at some college. How far did you get in college? About two and a half years. Did you get to any, did you do any legal courses whatsoever? Uh, left that and I started doing medical transportation. I was taking classes for paramedics. I was, I was just doing my studying, basics. I was doing my basics. Studying in college. I was just doing my basics. I get into it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that makes sense. And, and when you're beginning, that's all you do in this, right? Do you have any legal training, education, or experience? Experience with dealing with the court being charged before. And any other legal? Have you, do you know about the Code of Criminal Procedure? Yeah, I'm familiar. Do you know about the Texas Penal Code? I'm not. I'm familiar, but I'm not too many familiar with a lot of statutes and codes. Okay. Were you here for our earlier trial? No, I went up. I know. I know you went to the felony court, but we were in trial earlier. Did you see what happened in trial earlier? I like a glimpse of it walking. Okay. What I'm trying to say is that the lawyers on both sides had to introduce evidence. There's a, there's a specific procedure that you have to follow to have evidence admitted. It's detailed in the codes. You have to know that because once you represent yourself, I'm going to treat you as if you were a lawyer. I will hold you to the same standard 
And I'm not here to put you through law school because I have way too much drama as it is. I don't need any more drama, right? So if you don't do it the right way, I'm going to shut you down, right? I like to be nice to people, but I'm not taking you to school. Do you understand this? Um, do you understand the charges against you? I don't understand the nature of it. Okay, you're charged with unlawful carrying of a weapon. You're facing up to a year in jail. What they're saying is that you unlawfully had a weapon. As a result, you were charged, and now you're facing up to a year. Do you understand? Yeah, I worked telling me, but I still don't understand like why I went to jail for that. So that's why. I'm... What do you not understand? Uh, the court procedures, or I'm no, not... no, no, no. I'm asking no. about the nature of the charges. No, it's not. Don't look. Don't. Talk no, about the procedures. Don't talk about the licensing, about the conveying. Yeah, I know no, I'm getting charged with unlawful care. And right. The... Do you understand that? Yeah, what's going on? Okay. Um, do you have the right, or you understand the range of punishment that you're facing a year, correct? That's what I've been told. Okay. You have the right to court appointed counsel. Do you want counsel to represent you? I don't want legal advice. I don't need a legal team. I just want. Well, I just, if I yeah. offer you a lawyer now, would you want it? You really don't want a lawyer? I represent myself. I could get none more by myself than anyone representing me. Okay. Um, do you understand that you will not be able to claim ineffective assistance counsel if you lose at a later time, whether it's in trial, whether it's in a hearing, whether anything? Do you understand that? What that means is that you cannot appeal this thing. If you're found guilty and you go to jail, you know, a lot of lawyers or a lot of defendants like to claim, sorry guys, I'll be two minutes. A lot of lawyers, a lot of um, defendants like to blame their lawyers for screwing up. And they say, hey man, my lawyer messed up. I, I can tell you like, that's the number one thing that defendants complain about. And, and probably, I don't know this for sure, but I would suspect probably the number one reason why cases are overturned because of ineffective assistance of counsel, meaning that a lawyer for one reason or other messed up and messed up so bad that their cases have to be redone. You cannot complain about that at a later time. I've seen that many times. That's why I'm representing myself. But you can't, if you mess up, you cannot appeal this thing. Do you understand? Once and if you were found guilty, that's it. Do you understand? Um, you also have to comply with the same appellate procedures if you lose, meaning that if you want to appeal for one reason or the other, you have to uh, understand the guidelines and the timing, and you have to comply with those rules as well. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. You will not be granted any special consideration because of your lack of formal training. Do you understand this? Um, you may fail to properly raise points of error in the trial record if we go to trial. Meaning that if we go to trial and you object to something, because that's you, we, you hear that a lot, right? I object. I, this shouldn't be in there. You have to object properly. There's not, you can't just say object. There has to be more to it. You have to state the reason for the objection. It has to be a legal reason. You can't just say, I object and expect me to hold something out. You have to give the legal reason. And there's a proper method that you have to state and ask me to do things for it to be recognized on appeal. And if you don't know this, you cannot at a later date complain. Well, I didn't know that. You understand. You still don't want a lawyer. I, I will give you a free lawyer. Is this voluntarily, knowingly, and intelligently made? No one's forcing you to do this, okay? Um, knowing all this, are you sure that you still wanna represent yourself? I Look, I, I gotta tell you, I think that you're, you look like a great guy, you look like you're upstanding. I, I have no problems that you represent yourself understand that you need to be careful what you tell them though. Everything that you say, even if you think you're hurting yourself by admitting one thing or the other, you could be hindering your case, meaning hurting your case, even if you think you're helping yourself. Do you understand? I'll make you a deal. 
if at any time you want a lawyer, all you got to do is ask and I'll give you one. Really, if you ever feel like you're under the gun, that you feel like someone's taking advantage of you, I'm happy to give you a lawyer at any time. I want you to understand now, as a condition of your bond, though, I'm ordering you not to drive. Until you have a Texas driver license and a liability insurance, I'm ordering you not to drive. And I'm going to have you sign with me today an affidavit promising me you're not going to drive. If I find that you drive, I'm going to put you in jail. Do you understand? I have personal needs. Okay. You are not allowed to get into the driver's seat of a car and drive, convey, travel, however you want to term it. You cannot do that. And if I find that you do that, I'm going to put you in jail and I'm going to make your bond so high, your head's going to spontaneously combust. Do you understand? That way from my right standing thing? Or- no, but I'm telling you that you can't, you can't drive, convey, Get into the driver's seat of a car. If you do, you're going to go to jail because I will revoke your bond. You understand. The only conditions I'm putting on you now are three. No weapons. No picking up new cases. And don't get into the driver's seat of a car and drive, convey, travel. Are there any other adjectives that you can think of? I'm sure there are. <laughs> But I guess I'll put et cetera so that it tries to um, cover any type of um, wording, so to speak. All right. So, Mr. Amatom, I'm going to find that you're that you are OK to represent yourself. We need you to sign a form that you're going to do that. Even if I don't consent to any of these charges, because I do have my paperwork, I do have. If you don't consent, if you don't paperwork. consent, just go. If you don't think we have jurisdiction, look. If I didn't think anyone had jurisdiction over me, do you think I would be here? If I was in, in your shoes? Hell no, man. If I didn't think that someone didn't have jurisdiction over me to be anywhere, I'm not going there. I'm not going to get out, take a shower, put my clothes on because I like to be naked, right? You know, I'm not doing anything like that, you know? So if you don't think we have it, just go. Otherwise, you're here. You know we do. Right, because if you, I don't know. That's why I thought. Let me ask you this: If you just took off now, what would happen? There you go. What does that warrant mean? Um, What does it mean? On or what do you what do you mean as far as like the warrant? As far as jurisdiction is concerned, do you think that? Look, do you think that an officer is going to go out? and actually pick someone up if they didn't think they had jurisdiction to do? Do you know how much trouble they would get in? Do you know, uh-huh. if Steven went out there and arrested someone now just for shits and giggles, do you know how much trouble he would get in? Right? If he had no reason to do it, do you know how much trouble he would get in? Right, a lot. He'd lose his job. He'd probably get sued, right? Can't claim immunity. He'd be, he'd be toast, Swiss cheese. So that's what I'm saying. If you didn't really think that we didn't have jurisdiction, then go. I had to take care of this matter because- if it Because was, you know we have jurisdiction. I don't know, because I was going to go to 515 Rusk and file my lawsuit, my civil lawsuit with the officer who did arrest me because they did some unlawful, unconstitutional things that they did to me at that time. So I was going to take it there. You know, I didn't believe they had jurisdiction over me. I would wait to see how this case goes first before you do that. You know, see how the case goes first before you start jumping the gun. Like that's what I was waiting. You know, but ultimately, you know, if I didn't think anyone had jurisdiction over me, I'm not going to go there, man. I have enough important things to do in my life as it is. I mean, you've si- you've been sitting here since eight thirty in the morning, where it's now nearly one o'clock. You know what I mean? Really? Let's get this thing done. That way, you can move on with your life. We can move on with our life, and just everybody be happy. That's what it's about. All we want to do is protect our city. That's all we want to do, you know? And I'm going to do it at, at all costs. That's it. All right. I'm going to have you sign this affidavit. After that, we'll get you out of here. And um, so, Mr. Emetom, you are going to have to make a plan to meet with Mr. Petrov here so that you guys can exchange evidence. This is, the, he is our chief DA here. He's the one who gets all the evidence. That's going to present it to you. You can either do it here in court with us, or you can meet with them at their office.
because you're gonna have to get the evidence to look at it regardless. I'm happy to take any motions that you have now and I can look at them and then we can come back at a later date and I can roll on it for you. I see that you have a bunch of papers. I'm happy to take anything that you have and I'll take a look over it, you know? The clerk, uh, last month. Do you, do you see anything? I have the Which clerk did you file it? Um, I have it right here, the copy. It was with Marilyn Burgess. Is that for us? Clerk, right? We would still get it then, right? Or no? You filed it under this case number or the felony court case number? No, I filed it for this one on August 9th. It has, I have this case number on it. The 2522688. Yeah, that's it. I don't know. I don't see anything. Oh, wait a second. I see a motion for discovery. Is that it? It's a motion for discovery? Yes. Is that the only one that you've done? So far. Okay. I, I have to talk to officers in back. If you give me five minutes, let me take a look at it. And then I'm going to give you a copy so that you can look at it as well. Let me, sure. let me print it out. Um, Pavel, I'm printing it out for you. If you want to just take a look at it real quick. Sure. You done with him right now, Your Honor? No, I need him to, to swear to this, please. Okay. I just did just the no driving affidavit. That's it. All right, come up, Mr. Emma Tom. Let's go back. Can you go back on the record? Going back on the record. All right, Mr. Emma Tom, I've gotten your motion. Have you read it? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor, I've read through it. And? Uh, Your Honor, at this time, um, the state would, I mean, the state wouldn't even be able to comply with this order because it's asking for an immediate order of discovery. It sounds like spontaneously I need to give well, other than the that, opposing party. I mean, and is, there, is he asking? It's not, the language is not aligned with crime procedure or penal code. But beyond that, the only two... Uh, pieces that are requested that are reasonable um, that I can produce with a timeline uh, are one and seven. Everybody so, Mr. Emmettom, understand that you will get discovery, but sometimes it takes time. It's not immediate. It takes time to build a case, what to get videos, 911 calls, reports from officers. It takes time. It's not immediate. In your motion, I guess it says he wants an immediate, immediate order. There's just no way. We can't. An inspection. Yeah. But we will get it to you as, as he gets it, he will give it to you. I can grant you the order. I will take off the immediate provision, but I can, I can grant you everything that you want. I'll give you a, a, their case file. I can give it to you when they get it. Yes, uh, but Judge, this this discovery order is requesting things outside of the scope of discovery. Well, I'm not going to give him the kitchen sink. I mean, like what? Everything else. I mean, so one and seven are uh, aligned. One is requesting any documents, papers, books, accounts, letters, letters, photographs, videos, which are body cam, objects or tangible things, not privileged, which constitute or contain evidence. Of course, I'm going to hand that over. Okay. Uh, two... Any and all names of any witnesses, the Harris County Superior Court, State of Texas. I mean, County that's so Harris, broad, Mr. Emmett. And or any political. I mean, you want every witness. single witness in Harris County? That's what that's asking for. You have to properly represent myself for the case. That's 4.2 million people. Really? Really? So that doesn't, it's. I mean, I'm not going to grant that. That's silly. It's too you want, It doesn't go into just going to Imagine discovery. any and all names of any witness for the Harris County Superior Court, the state of Texas, County of Harris, or any political subdivision thereof may have. That's so broad that to even try to comply with that would take years. That's, I mean, in relation to this case, yes, nothing else, nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is this case and nothing else. So I'm happy to comply with the names of witnesses in this particular case, yes, I will do that. And I can mark on there for this case only. 
Are you okay with it? Your Honor, yeah. only in the event in the event that you were to grant something like that, it would need to be filed by the defendant. The, what you're granting is what is written, not what is subsequently modified. <clears throat> okay, so, so I guess- The language just needs I'll to just, be corrected. I'm, okay, so I'm, what I'm gonna tell you is, you're right, Poel. I mean, yeah. right. So, so I, I just wanted to clarify I, that for the record. You're representing yourself. I can't do the work for you, right? He so kindly is <laughs> reminding me that because I kind of, right. Um, so that's too broad. We can go down the list if you wish, but okay. yeah, let's do it. I mean, we have so three, a true and complete original certified alleged contract with wet ink signatures between the petitioner, the Harris County Superior Court State of Texas or, and or political subdivisions thereof may have law states that in order for the Harris County and he's not, it's, I mean, it's not even citing law, uh, valid lawful contract between the petitioner, let them bring it forward for petitioner's experience inspection or immediately dismiss all charges um I, I believe this is going into ucc this is not uh, I, I mean here you're contract. going into the sovereign citizen type language so, just common law okay so your honor um yeah, that, i will not be agreeing to that here there's no in i mean you're saying a true and complete original and or certified copy of the alleged alleged not even spelled correctly contract with wet ink signatures between the petitioner and the Harris County Superior Court. I mean. So I'm opposed to that. Um, in what contract? Contract complaint, whatever. I know this is statutory and it's not going over common law. So I don't, I'm not familiar with the statutes like I explained before. You're, well, you're a lawyer now. You're going to have to familiar yourself with it. You're trying me on statutes. I want to be tried on common law. You're going to have to do it. I'm not sure. There's no common law here. It's everything's done by statute. There's no common law here. It's all done by statute. And since you're the lawyer, you need to know that. I recognize the, st the steps of the statutory steps. That's why I don't recognize. So how, tried you, if, let me ask you this. How on earth are you going to represent yourself if you don't even know that? Once I get everything I need in my discovery. He's not going to, he's not, no. He's going to give you body cams. He's going to give you 911 call, he's going to give you witness lists, and that's it. Right? Is there anything else that would be in here? Um, I would, uh, so there may be dash cam I need to check. So I haven't gotten the body cam or dash cam yet. I need to check what all this is. Emma Tom, I mean, let's get real. If you're having problems with things of this very elementary nature, how are you going to represent yourself? I'm happy to give you a lawyer. You know, but some things are just, I mean, there's no- We must conclude this hearing with the remainder of the list as well, and then we can go with the- well, Hold on, just so he knows. So number four, a true and complete original and or certified copies of the criminal record of the attorneys of record, judge, magistrate, pro tem, commissioners, witnesses as well as all officers of this court yeah, that, that doesn't apply here really i mean you don't my criminal history you think i have criminal history hey, do i need to ask the folks about higher court or higher court look at this matter or i mean you certainly can you can do anything you want to in life until someone says no right but I don't know where you're going to get. I mean, appellate courts need jobs too. How far are you going to get? I don't know. How much money are you going to waste? I don't know. A true and complete certified copy of all oaths, commissions, as well as bonds of all officers of the court, including but not limited to deputies, court clerks, judges, magistrates, pro tems, commissioners that have or may decide to involve themselves in this matter, appointed or elected, signed under penalty or perjury on and for the official public record. Well, I don't know what bonds you're talking about. What bonds? Like James bonds? Parent bonds, bid bonds. Which ones? The parents bond, bid bonds. I'm not familiar with that. 
The political affiliation of any and all states, witnesses, and all officers of the courts. So well, I can't. State as opposed. I mean, I, you know, I really. Any evidence which in any way is exculpatory to the case? Yes. Anything in state's possession, I'm unopposed to. I will I will produce anything exculpatory that's in our possession. But regarding the case. Number eight. Documented proof of claim of injury signed under penalties of perjury with all immunities waived from the judges of this court. Attorneys of record, the Harris County Superior Court, state of Texas County of Harris, as well as this court, and for the official record. Documented proof of claim of injury signed under penalties of perjury. So what are you referring to there? Or the opposing party who made the complaint. What? Against me, whoever made the complaint against me, who's the opposing party. Okay. Well, the Harris County District Attorney's Office. Party that they have to complain, who's the, I don't recognize who that is. What do you mean you don't recognize? So the state of Texas or Harris County's, what was that? Right. So they alleged that you did something unlawful. As a result, the officer arrested you and then brought that information all to the Harris County District Attorney's Office. And then they, in a two-prong matter, number one, I found probable cause in this case, and then a grand jury indicted you on your felony case. So it's the indicted. Harris County- I haven't been indicted on that. I just came from upstairs. I haven't been indicted on that case yet. Has it, has it been indicted or no? Well, I mean, they have, I think, up to 180 days to indict you, but- um, Right. Not been an idea. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess would it be the information is that he's asking for? But you want the charging instrument, I guess, is what you want. Your Honor, again, I think it's just a. I know that a it's so misunderstanding. Um, but uh, if it were rephrased correctly, I can better understand what is being asked. And therefore, that's why I cannot agree to this order because I, I get it. But I'm it trying to go through with him align. so that he understands. If it aligns asking. with what, if it aligns with something I can understand, sure. I mean, I, I I can understand what's being asked, and then I can turn it over. But I don't have that. This is not that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. You know, um, I'm. Yeah, I don't know what's not being understood mostly. Here, let's go through number 13, right. just because it's a, there's a lot here that you got 16 and, and it's already one, one third. The CUSIP number tied to this case, which will show that this court and or officers of the court are profiting off this case and it is trading on the stock market on and for the official public record. <laughs> I mean, I am the trustee for the name Eton Emmaton. Let's put this right here. I'm a the beneficiary for their name. I've been the trustee. I have my all my paperwork that I need to prove to the court. I mean, and that may well be good for this. federal stuff, but not for us. This is state. You're with a lot of statutes. So yeah. <laughs> a copy of all officers of the court registration report and profile, which is registered under. Dunn and Bradstreet on and for the official public record. Yeah, you're gonna to have to go through this motion more. It needs to be more specific. Um, I'm, uh, you know- point, Just for the record's purposes, the state is opposed to this motion in its entirety at this time. So not one in seven then? Not with the media, not that language. Oh, no, right. And we okay. can modify that. Um, so it needs to be more specific. You need to have a more like realistic guideline. They can't give you stuff immediate because he may not even have it in his possession. So I can't order him to give you something that he doesn't have in his possession. Um, how soon can they get a uh, next trial date? With it? I mean, my next court date, will they have it? Or how soon? Uh, I, don't mean, I don't even know. I mean, the body cam and dash, um, I can escalate that by the next uh, court date. The lab, I am unsure of a timeline at this time. The lab of the uh, I mean, substance. Okay. And so, I'm going to tell you now, it takes a lot. It takes quite a while to get labs done. Because, I mean, you imagine we live in a city with 4 million people. Do you know how many people get arrested 
with illegal, uh, alleged illegal substances that have to be tested, you get in line in front of everybody else. I don't have the lab results from the store that I got it from. I have the store that is in the lab result papers that they got it from in Houston. So I could submit that as well if, you, if it makes it quicker. I mean, I know you well, still have to do I, your own. I know that you're saying that, but there's remember, there's always two sides to the story. So they need to test what they have to see what that is. And it's going to take a while, but it'll get done. You just be patient, but it'll get done. At this point, we are pending body cam in the lab. That is what okay. discovery is pending. In the um, typically, what we do is we'll set it out 30 days, and then we'll just have you come back. And when you come back in 30 days, we'll see where they are. And then at that time, you guys can make a plan to go over the evidence and I, I don't, you're not going to give him a copy though. He's just going to have to review it. I believe it's, it's subject to inspection. Right. Yeah. So you're going to have to come bring a computer. Um, USB. You, you, is it, it's not through VHS, it's through. I'm unaware. I'll familiarize myself more before the next court date of the transfer of. You're going to probably need to bring yourself a computer that has a CD-ROM because usually they have stuff on CD-ROM drives or on, on CDs that, so that you're going to have to be able to look at it any kind of dash cam, any kind of body cam, they usually put it on a CD-ROM or on a CD for you to be able to look at it. The only other thing I need you to do is I need you to swear to us that you're not going to drive. I am making it a condition of your bond. I hold that until no. I, I put all this some stuff in my paperwork. I don't drive, no. I don't go by no. driver's license. No. I have my passport that I do go no. by. I need I you to do it now. Okay, I need you to do it. And I'm making it a condition of your bond that you sign the document that you're not going to drive, I don't want to convey. I don't want to say anything or agreement to say anything like that because I'm still trying to see the- I'm gonna uh, revoke your bond. If, you're not, if, you, if you don't sign it, I'm gonna revoke your bond. That's it. So I've, got to, for, I've got to be forced to sign it. If I don't sign it, I can't have the option to take that paper. Oh, no, I'm not, I, you don't have to sign it, but I'm gonna revoke your bond. But in what matter of that? Sorry? I don't understand why I'm, Bond will get revoked because of it. Because I am ordering you as a condition of your bond not to drive, convey, travel, any way you want to put it, behind the wheel of a car in Harris County, Texas, unless you are properly licensed with a Texas driver license and liability insurance in your name. I go by my U.S. passport now. I don't go by my Texas driver license. I don't license anymore. Not commercial. Nevertheless, I'm having you sign a document that you understand and that you promise that you're not going to do it. I don't understand it fully, but that's why. If you don't, that's okay. But I am going to revoke your bond. And that's it. Correct. Being forced to sign this right now, or it's like, because. You don't have to sign it. You know the consequence. You're hearing it now. If you've never heard it before, you're hearing it now. For the entirety of the case. If you do, if you get your driver's license and show me that you have. I'm not a commercial driver. I don't, yeah, I don't engage in commerce. I don't do it. Do you think that the five year old kid that gets hit and killed in a car? or the 69-year-old grandmother that ends up paralyzed from an accident, cares whether you are conveying, whether you are in commerce, non-commerce. Injuries don't care whether you're conveying, whether you're traveling. Accidents happen whether you're conveying, whether you're driving, whether you're traveling. That, that doesn't care, right? When you get into an accident, it doesn't matter in what method you're doing it. An accident is just that. And if you have an accident, I want to make sure that the other party will be taken care of. I'm only asking you to follow the law. I'm not asking you to split the atom here. Great. Break the law reading that, but I was, Great. I don't I'm asking you to time. sign this. If you don't, you don't have to, but I'm going to revoke your bond. That's it. And I'm, Mr. Emmeton. If you get a Texas driver's license and you get insurance, I will take this deal off. That's what I believe in, and that's belief the Constitution. I don't. Was it, that's okay. They trying to apply that I need to get a license and insurance. When I worked used to be a commercial driver for this day, I don't commercial drive anymore. I don't do medical transportation. I'm just a 
Did you hear what I said about an accident, about whether you're conveying your travel? I understand exactly what you mean about the accident. Okay. I know if I was to get on the accident road with no insurance, I could get sued and there'll be a civil matter and I go to jail. I understand that. That's why I drive. I travel very cautious. I don't. You just said I drive. I I drive. You said the magic words. I was a driver. Come on. Don't be Helen Keller. Come on. And I'm trying to protect all of Harris County. I'm not You're protecting you. I'm protecting all the 4.2 million people here. That's what I'm doing. Because if you get into an accident, I know that you're not going to be out of dime out of your pocket. But all those other people, they're going to be out of a crap load of money. And I'm going to do everything in my power to protect every single person of Harris County. And I don't care if I offend you. I don't care if I make you mad. I don't care if it, your sensibilities are upset. Don't care. I don't. All I want is every person protected. And that's it. And I'm doing what the law requires. I'm not asking you to do anything that's not outside the law. And you, as a acting as a lawyer, should be able to look it up and see. Because it's all in the transportation code. So... You can sign it. If you don't, I'll have you meet with Stephen. That's it. Is one of my rights reserved? They're reserved. I'm waiving my rights to the court. No. I mean, that's waiving my rights. It's a contract. It's me. What, what, why, what right are you waiving? My right to travel. That's infringing my right to travel with the Constitution. No. No. Take the Dodge Patas. I don't know what that means. Happy trails. Use your feet. You can travel with your feet. I can't. I live in Austin. I only live here in Houston. Take a bus. Take an Uber. But I want to make sure if you're caught driving, I'm going to put you in jail. And I'm going to make your bond so high, you will spontaneously combust. Because I want you to understand that I mean business. And I'm protecting every single person I can. And that's it. Sign this right now. No, no. I mean, ready to meet with jail or arrest if I don't sign this. Right correct. Now. I mean, that is correct. Heaven, I'm That's correct. Imprisonment if I don't sign this. This is on the record. It's on a record. I have a report right here, and it's on video. Can you file the bond conditions as well? No driving without a license, please. This is it right here. That and I'm going to have them file it just in, so I can give you a copy as well. 